guys, welcome back to the channel, Nate's Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel, or who just happened to stumble across this video. And today I'm going to be doing part two of my February-March book haul. This part is going to be on the books that I got for review, as well as purchased on my own, obviously including Dollar Tree. I am going to be doing one more book haul, which will be on the things that I purchased from Thrift Books, because this entire shelf is from Thrift Books, and I didn't want to include this in this video since I have well over maybe 15 books right in front of me, I'm not even sure. But, um, yeah, the first one was my Book of the Month Book Club book haul, and I showed you guys the things that I got from January and also from March. I didn't get anything in February. I am debating on purchasing some stuff from April, for April because I see a lot of books that I'm like, quite interested in. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to start this off with the Dollar Tree picks. You guys know how I feel about Dollar Tree. I haven't been in Dollar Tree in a long time. Um, so I think these are things that I got back in February. February because I didn't do anything for March so um, I actually need to check out both my local Dollar Trees really soon but um this first one is a little bit beat up but it doesn't bother me and this is something I'm trying to get into and it's the Kane Carnegie's survival guide from Rick Riordan if I am not mistaken but it's Disney Hyperion and um it's a little scuffed up and beat up but it doesn't bother me and yeah it's literally just a tiny little guide I guess on the characters and the things from the story I have not read it I believe it's middle grade or YA fantasy mythology and um, yeah it looks really cool and I love that the images like switch up so we have this the next book that I picked up from Dollar Tree is going to be an adult historical fiction I'm not sure if there's fantasy aspects I don't think so but um, it's by Sharon K Penman and it's called Lionheart it really intrigued me it sounded amazing I'm trying to get into historical fantasy because one of my favorite adult historical fantasies ever is like the white queen and the white princess so I decided why not um, so yeah and the cover was actually dope to me so got that one another one along the lines of historical fiction is going to be the Queen's Gamble by Barbara Kyle and I feel like I've heard this before on booktube or through Goodreads couldn't remember so I just got it if I don't like it I can always just give it to my local library but it was only a dollar and um, it just sounds amazing it says with enemies on all sides the greatest danger lies within so yes yeah, about young Queen Elizabeth so we'll see if I enjoy it the next one is by Stephen R. Donaldson, and it's called The King's Justice. This is a bind-up of two novellas. Um, I believe this is a sci-fi or fantasy. I know it's adult for a fact, but um, yeah, it sounded really good. It sounded like something I would be into. The ratings on Goodread wasn't the best, but um, I figured I can give it a try. It's a nice hardcover, and I, I, I don't know. I just I thought it was really cool how he was walking in what looks like to be a forest with the black jacket and stuff. It was giving me almost like Sherlock Holmes kind of vibes. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. The last one I actually picked up, I was, like, excited to even find. Um, it doesn't have the actual, like, pretty version of the cover on it. So I'll insert the picture of the actual cover here. But it's called Blade of Fortrio. Fort Rio. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's by Juliette Marillier. And I've heard so many people read about her writing. Um, I do own... A bunch of her books on ebook but I physically own a few of her books I don't even know where the other one is it is uh somewhere on the shelf here it is I have the air to seven waters and then I also have dreamers pool and tower of thorns I do have her other like YA series and whatnot on my e-reader but um yeah this sounded really interesting I will say the font on here is like super tiny but that doesn't bother me it was only a dollar and um it's Juliet Marillier I think this is book two within whatever series this comes from but um yeah it's from Tor so hey why not okay moving on to the things that I purchased so um I have one book that was actually gifted to me and that is act like success think like success and it's from steve harvey my mom picked this up for me she got herself a copy and myself a copy so i figured why not i do like steve harvey's writing it says discovering your gift and the way to life's riches so this is a non-fiction it's a doubt um but yeah the next book that i picked up was from rite aid i do like to get my little mass market paperbacks every now and then from like rite aid and walgreens i don't have a problem with mass market paperbacks i know a lot of people find it to be like annoying but I think they're cute um, especially the, the covers are like super cute but this is by Christine Feehan and it's from her to her Torpedo Ink series it's called Vengeance Road I think this is the first book in the series um, if I'm not mistaken this is Adult Paranormal um, I think it's Paranormal yes it's Paranormal Romance um, that's what it says on the back so yeah thing it is I have so many of her books like so many from her Carpathian I think that's what the series is called Carpathian series um I have yet to read any of them I own them on ebook as well 
I am like buying all of her books and not, have not read any of them, so I need to get to that soon. But Paranormal Romance, I'm a sucker for Paranormal Romance. It's paperback. Um, it's a mass market paperback, and I thought it was cute, so why not? Okay, so the next set of books that I got, I picked up from Lifeway. I went to Tennessee last week, and I decided to head over to Lifeway because I do work with um, BH b and Books as well as Lifeway um, as a book blogger. So I decided to go there since their headquarters was in Nashville and I made a purchase of some books and they were having a sale so um, I purchased some things. Why not? They were having really good deals. So a lot of these are going to be on the biblical Christian fiction side because those are the types of things. Lifeway is a Christian based company that sells and um, makes Bible studies Bibles as well as like Christian biblical fiction books. But um, yeah, so the first one I picked up I was like super, 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 super excited to find because I've been trying to get the ebook for this everywhere without having to um, buy it on Kindle. Um, just because I have a Nook, I prefer to read my things on my Nook. I do have the Kindle app, but I was trying to avoid that. And I could never find this book. And I think this is a third book. Yeah, I've been looking for this book everywhere. Can't find it anywhere. Um, so I was like, you know what? They had it. It was $4.97. Um, the original price for this, I believe, is 10 bucks, And... Why not? So, it is going to be Siren Song by Mary Weber. Uh, I know that Mary Weber just came out with To the Best of Boys or something like that. That book that just came out. I think that was her book. And, um, yeah, all that I know is that this has to do with mermaids, sirens, and everything. It's fantasy, YA. That's all I know. I did not start reading the series only because I really, really wanted the third book before I binge read it. Um, so, yeah, here are the other two books. Siren's uh, Song and Siren's... I'm sorry, Storm Siren and Siren's Fury. So, yeah, they're YA, they're fantasy, par not fantasy, but, like, paranormal, and I'm super, super excited to dive into this, like, really soon. And, I mean, four ninety seven is a steal. Like, why not? Okay, the next book that I purchased was, um, and it retails for $16.99, but they had it on sale for $6.97, so I basically was saving, like, 10 bucks. And, um, this is a Christian fiction, and it's called The Valley of Dry Bones by Jerry B. Jenkins. I've heard many people have bought his writing before. I have yet to read any of his work like any, and I think I own a few of his books, uh, but yeah, this sounds amazing. I know that the Valley of Dry Bones is actually a scripture or a verse that comes from the book of Ezekiel in the Bible, so I figured why not. It sounds like it's going to be interesting, like a sci-fi kind of series, and um, yeah, I'm interested to see what this is about and how it goes, so the Valley of Dry Bones, and I just love the um, kind of cracked ground with the little glimpse of water, really pretty. The next book I also got at a, at a deal. Um, the retail price was fourteen ninety nine. Again, it was six ninety seven. They were basically having a deal where you buy three books from their like clearance section, you get a fourth one free. So I ended up getting two copies of Valley of the Dry Bones because my mom wanted a copy as well. But this is another one of those books that I've like really been like looking to read for a very long time and was debating on getting it. I do own the ebook of it, but I said, you know what, why not? And this is called Slender Reads by um, by Taxi. Susan Gregory. It's Jochebed's Hope. This is biblical fiction. It is about the mo the mother of Moses. And um, yeah, that's all that I know. I'm super excited to dive into this and see how this goes. The last book I picked up from Lifeway, I actually paid full price for. Go figure. But um, it was $14.99. And this was one of the books that I was like super, super excited to like get because I've been dying to get the other two books from this author. I own um, three books from her already, if I can show you guys. So, I own Love Amid Ashes of Fire and Lions and Isaiah's Daughter, which you're probably not going to see too well. But they're biblical fictions by Misu Andrews. And um, she has two more books in this kind of series that with, like that goes with Love Amid the Ashes. And then she has a, another book that I want to read. So, there's basically about four or five books that I need to get from her. But this was like one that I really, really wanted. And the sequel to this I actually own on um, my Kindle because I was able to get an art copy of it. But I don't want to read that without reading the first book. So I decided to get Pharaoh's Daughter by Misu Andrews. This is the story of uh, Pharaoh's Daughter who basically saved Moses from the uh, basket. So I think it's pretty cool that I have two stories that are like about Moses in a sense. So yeah, it's biblical fiction. If you're not into biblical fiction, I totally get it. I am a Christian. That's the religion that I follow. And um, yeah. Okay, so the next set of books I actually picked up from a local bookstore in Brooklyn. Um, I am from New York. I'm a New Yorker at heart, but I currently reside and live in Jersey. But um, I'm from the Bronx, and I know much about Brooklyn and Queens. I went to school in Queens, and I'm always, like, in Brooklyn all the time. So we stopped at um, this bookstore called Greenlight Bookstore. It has two locations in Brooklyn. Here is 
that. So if you live in like the New York area or you visit Brooklyn or anything, you can check that out. But um, we stopped there on a whim because we always go to the Barnes and Nobles in Brooklyn because we go to two churches on Sundays. We go to my church, which is in the Bronx, and we go to a service in Brooklyn. So we went to this bookstore, you know, and they had like this little cart with like a few books that they were like uh, selling at like a cheaper price. So I snagged up two. One I already read and I freaking love. And I actually ended up purchasing the sequel, which I also read already. But I read this series already, um, the novella, this, the first book, and the sequel already, and I saw the physical copies. I was like, why not? So this one was on sale for six bucks. Um, if you guys can see, six dollars. It's Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I have not read anything from Holly Black except for this series, and so far I am loving it. So I do own her other books, um, and I need to read them really, really soon. But yeah, this was six dollars. I will say it's six dollars because it's ripped. If you guys can see, like, right here, it's ripped. But what I'm going to do is tape it and, um, yeah. I'm going to tape the inside of the flap, like, right here where it's ripped at. And, uh, I'm still going to read it. I'm going to take this sticker off here. But, yes, it is a YA fantasy about, uh, fairies, dark fairies. And, um, I just love Jude. I love Cardin, and I can't wait. I just... It's my baby, and I'm like, I can't wait for the third book to come out because I, like, the, the way the second book ended, it killed me. And I'm going to talk about the second book later on because I also did pick up the second book, though I read them. But, yeah, um, paperback, $6, why not? The next book that I saw on the card was actually on sale for 8 bucks. I'm not sure why it was on the card. I did not find anything wrong, except for maybe, like, the book pages. You're not even going to be able to see it, but there's, like, slight dents. But, um, I didn't see anything, like, wrong. Maybe the spine? Let's see. Nope. Every, well, the spine is a little beat up, but it doesn't, like, look crazy. But it's Bar Mirage by Somia Dowd. I'm probably butchering it. This book was on sale for $8. Um, yeah, this book retails for $18.99. Like, I only got it for $8. I saved 10 bucks, and, um, it's really pretty. All I know is that this is why a Venus. I think it's YA fantasy. Um, I know that it's YA, and that's all that matters. So I want to read this because I've heard mixed things about it. Um, a lot more good things than bad. But um, I think this is fantasy or sci-fi. I'll put on the screen exactly what it is. But if you've read it, let me know what you think about it. Because I'm super excited to dive into this. And the cover is stunning. I just love the feel of like the velvety co cover with that pop of gold. Just stunning. The last three books my mom actually ended up getting for me because me, her, and my sister went to the bookstore. Um, and I really, really wanted these books, and they're all first in a series, um, so I'm going to start off with this one because I've already read this one, but I need to reread it so that I can read the sequel. I do own the sequel, um, it's up there, Crooked Kingdom, I'm not sure if you can see right there. So I do own Crooked Kingdom, haven't read it yet, I love Six of Crows, but I saw that they had it, and I was like, you know what, why not? So I picked up Six of Crows, this is YA fantasy, if, yeah, fantasy, um, and it's about a heist, and there's magic, and there's just so much just yeah I love Cass so yeah and I just love the covers like how they have that foil on them so yes I am trying to get my hands on the um, Shadow of Shadow and Bone trilogy um, because I read that loved it but I want to reread it all before I read King of Scars and I'm debating on purchasing the physical copy of King of Scars just because I have the ebook of it so we'll see but Six of Crows I love this can't wait to read it and it's gonna look really really pretty next to Cricket Kingdom on my shelf. The next two books um I was like super stoked for and this was a book that I was debating on because I've read it from this author before one of her books from one of her series and then I have book three or book four from one of her other series so I feel like I need to read the series in order but I'm not sure, so I'm going to look into it. But I just, I couldn't because the cover was stunning and it was calling my name. And I just love that it has both gold and silver foiling on it. I think it's pretty. But it's Flamecaster by Cinda William Chimas. Cinda Williams Chima, right? Yes. And, um, yeah, it's the first book in the Shadow Realms trilogy. I believe it's a trilogy. Hopefully it's a trilogy. But she does have two other series out. I've read one, the first book from her first series, I think it is. I can't remember the name of the book. I'll put the title, like, the, the picture here of the cover. But, um, yeah. I'm excited to dive into this. It's fantasy. That's all that matters to me. It's YA, and it's action-packed. So, yeah. The last book that I picked up from the, uh, bookstore was one I didn't know what to do because they had a lot of her books. Um, they had this entire trilogy, they had a bind-up of one of her other trilogies, and then they had the other duology. So, like, I was debating, 
on which one to get because like I really really wanted them and they were only $16 um, but I decided to just start off with the first one I do literally own all of her books on ebook mind you I haven't read any of them but um, it is by N.K. Jemison, and it's the fifth season. All I know is that this is adult fantasy, and I'm excited to read this. This has the winner, it's the winner of the Hugo Award for 2016, and um, it doesn't look too big. So, we'll see. I'm, like, stoked to get into this. So, yeah. Really, really nice. I Again, I own the entire trilogy. Um, I think I have, like, two e-arcs of the, first, the second and third book, and then I downloaded the first book, but now I have a physical copy, so can't wait to get into this. Alrighty. Homemade iced coffee. So good. But, um, so, Barnes & Nobles. I love Barnes & Nobles. Um, Barnes & Nobles has always had, like, a special place in my heart because it's Barnes & Nobles. And, um, yeah, we, we've been going to Barnes & Nobles, like, quite often. And then my mom recently got a Barnes & Nobles membership card. We used to have one back in the day when, like, books were, like, cheaper. But, um, yeah, she got a new one, so, yeah. And the few times that we've gone to Barnes and Nobles, um, we go to like the what is it called? The exceptional value section where they have books like at discounted prices. And then the most recent time that we went, they were having this big like fifty percent off in the store. We didn't even know. So I got my hands on some really good books that I really, really wanted to read. And all of these again I've own um on ebook, but there's something about physical copies and um this first one is a sequel that I've already read and I just raved about the first one and it's The Wicked Cling by Holly Black. Um, I think I really wanted the Barnes & Noble's exclusive edition like the cover one but I just I think this is stunning and it makes me want to buy Cruel Prints in hardcover just to match but I'm not going to be that crazy. Um, but yeah, The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the second book in, oh, I don't even know what the name of this series is. I think it's called the Cruel Prints series <laughs> trilogy. I don't think. I don't I don't know, but it's a sequel to Cruel Prince, and it's why fantasy about fairies, and uh, the things that Cardin did at the end of this book pissed me off, um, and I'm really interested to see what's next in store for Jude. Again, I read this, I read the ebook, I found this for 50% off, and I just, I could not buy it, because I really want to reread the series and annotate, and I honestly enjoy the little mats that are in here. I believe her name is Little Wolf Reads here on YouTube. Um, her name was Mayana, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she actually colored in, I think, either this map or... Uh, she colored in one of the maps. I can't remember what book it is. I think it was either Cruel Prince or this one. And it just looks so dope, so I'm thinking about, like, coloring in, it, like, the beginning pages of them. But, like, I just... I think the book is stunning with the little illustrations and, um... I just I can't so I got the hardcover it doesn't match my paperback of the first book but that's okay I'm not a like a hardcore person for like my books matching so it doesn't bother me but got the Wicked King by Holly Black and then there were some other books again 50% off for these so I was like super stoked so this one is actually book two um, to the series, if I'm not mistaken, yes, so, um, I do own the entire trilogy, again, I'm just gonna say, I own all of these books on ebook, I haven't read them yet, but I own them, but there's something about physical books, okay, so this one is the Hunting, oh, sorry, Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Meniscalo, Meniscalo, I think that's how you pronounce that, this is historical fiction with a little bit of fantasy, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's fantasy aspects to it, but I know that it's definitely historical. And, um, I can't wait to read this, but I definitely have to read Stalking Jack the Ripperverse. And then I also own the third book that came out. So, yeah. It's YA. And it sounds good. Um, this one has exclusive bonus content in it from Barnes & Nobles. So, yes. I can't wait to dive into this book. Then I found some, like, fantasy novels that I've, like, been, like, super, super excited to get into. And I'm really trying to get into, like, epic high fantasy a lot more. Um, because I know that the ones that I did, I have read, I've enjoyed thoroughly. So, the, I don't even know which one to show first. Okay, so this one is Black Prism by Brent Weeks. This is the first book, yes, in the Lightbringer series. I don't know if it's a trilogy or a series, but I know that it's adult fantasy, and it has to do with light and color, and I want to dive into this so bad. Um, this is a massive book. Not as massive as, like, Oathbringer. Um, it's almost, yeah, it's well over 600 pages. Um, but I, I just, I can't wait to get into this. Again, this is another series I own already on ebook, but 
why not and i own another one of his books uh i don't know if you guys can see this right here um shadow's edge the night angel trilogy but that's book two i need to get book one i don't really need to buy the physical copy because i do own the ebooks but i feel like i'm gonna love them and i'm gonna want to reread them and annotate so we have this massive baby and again 50% off. The last one was another one, an, another kind of like adult fantasy that I like super, super like excited for and can't wait to read. And it's Malice by John Gwynny. I think that's how you say it. Gwynny. Um, I don't know anything about this. I'm not even gonna lie. I know nothing about it. I just heard that it's a really great fantasy novel. So, yeah. Pretty much. And I just, I like the clean look of it. Um, it just... It's so amazing and I can't wait to dive into this. Yep massive um let me see how many pages clocking almost at yeah it's over 600 pages as well um but i i don't care i can't did that just say 83 chapters oh gosh there's like 80 something plus chapters in here but that's okay can't wait to dive into this okay so these last set of books i got from the bargain section at barnes and nobles so they were all less than i believe seven dollars um so this first one that i got was actually a sort of repurchase but I forgot that I owned it because I have the hardcover and the paperback is like so stunning and it's historical fiction and it's by Philippa Gregory and it is the white princess I adore this book so much it's historical fiction set around the time of uh, Henry Tudor yes Henry Tudor and um, it's very action-packed very much filled with drama it makes you cry but it's really good and it keeps you intrigued I really really enjoyed it so much so I have the hardcover like way over here but I just love the paperback because they actually have like the cover tie-ins to the show so this is a show that I watched I watched the white queen on stars um and I didn't realize that they also had this on um stars as well as a series so I need to actually watch this and then reread the book I'm okay with having a paperback and a hardcover copy just because I love it so much and this is the TV show tie-in so it doesn't bother me as much but I'm a super huge fan of this series. I love it. Philip Gregory's writing is phenomenal so I can't wait to dive back into this world. The next book is more of a YA Christian fiction fantasy and I don't know much about it. It's called Sovereign by Ted Decker and Tosca Lee. This is one of the books in the Books of the Mortals. I'm not sure what book this is in a series. I'll put it on the screen but it sounds interesting and I'm excited to dive into this world. World. The next book is actually a book that I have tried to read the first book in the series so many times. Even tried to listen to the audiobook, but I was never focused. And I did haul the second book to the series um, last month, so you can click the on the screen for that. But it's going to be Manners and Mutiny by Gail Carragher. is book four in the Finishing School series. All that I know is that this is a YA paranormal set in um, a steampunk kind of world and it's also a mix of historical fiction that's all i know and i want to go into this blind i can't read this book obviously because this is book four i heard gail, gail carragher's writing is amazing i own majority of her books on ebook as usual but um have yet to read any of them so i'm excited to dive into this world the next book is a thousand nights by ek johnson i don't know much about it except that it's ya fantasy that's all I know. It's a really pretty cover, though. I love, like, the pop of purple, pink in her dress. I tried reading these words, but they're just written so weird. But, um, I'm excited to dive into this. The next book is going to be a YA sci-fi. I think it's dystopian, though. It might be fantasy, but I feel like it's YA dystopian. Um, and it's by Alexandra Bracken, and it's Wayfarer. This is a sequel to Passengers. I have not read Passengers. I own both of these on ebook. But this was a cover purchase. I love the cover. It's really pretty. And then the hardcover itself without the dust jacket. It's super pretty. And, um, why not? You know, I only had to pay $5.98 for it compared to its original price, which is $17.99. So I saved a good $12, $11 on this book. The next book is an adult paranormal. I'm not sure if it's paranormal romance, but I know that it's paranormal. Um, and it's by Sher Sherilyn Kenyon. And it's called Death Doesn't Bargain. It's part of the Dead Man's Cross trilogy, I believe. I don't know which book this is in that trilogy. I'll put on the screen exactly which one it is. Don't know much about this book. Don't know much about the series. I own a lot of her books. Have yet to read any of her books. But it was only six ninety six what six ninety eight yeah six ninety eight, and the cover is stunning. I just love the red color with the angel and the sword, and I think that's like flames, and it just looks stunning. So why not? The last book is from another author that I just showed you guys, and um, it's okay because I bought book one in paperback for fifty percent off, and they had book four in the bargain center. So this was only six ninety eight, and it's book four in the library. It's called The Blood Mirror by Burton Weeks. Um, yeah epic fantasy that's all i know 
This next book I actually won in a Goodreads giveaway, which I was super stoked about, and it's from Lorelai James. It's I Want You Back. It's a part of her I Want You series. This is adult contemporary romance. I find that I do enjoy her writing, so I can't wait to dive into this, and I think the cover is just really cute. I don't have a problem with mass market paperbacks. I think they're tiny and cute and easy to travel with. Um, some people prefer, like, the standard paperbacks, but these are cute enough for me to deal with. The next book I got for like a bookstagram kind of deal and it's called Her Colorado Cowboy by Mindy Obenhouse. This is more of a clean romance. Um, so yeah, all that I know, it has to do with a mom. Yes, that's what mom, a cowboy, and it's a romance, so why not? And I do want to get into some more like cowboy romances, so that is the cover. This next book is also one that I got for like bookstagramming and it's from Lauren Lauren K. Denton. It's called Glory Road. It's contemporary adult. Um, and it sounds really interesting. This is a romance involved in this story. I think the lady is a mother. Yes, there's a mother, there's a mom, there's a guy who's wealthy. Um, so yeah. That's all I know. The last few books are all books that I got for Block Tour. So we're going to dive into this. So the first book I got is from Waterbrook and Mountain. I actually work with this company. Um, they are a Christian-based company that does a lot of, like, Christian-based fiction novels, um, some romance, some biblical fiction. So this was one that I really wanted to try. This is a Christian romance set in historical time. It's set in 18, 1895. Yes. Um, and it's almost a YA, so I'm not really sure if you want to consider this like new adult. I might consider it new adult because, um, you know, it says that she's 18 years old, but it's called A Silken Thread. It sounds really good. It sounds like it's going to have some cute romance as well as a lot of, like, family aspects to it. And it's by Kim Vogel Sawyer. This is an art cover, um, art copy, sorry, and I just love the colors on this book. It's really pretty. I like pink. I like corals and peaches. So that's gorgeous. The next book is one that I've already done a review on previously when I received an art, but I'm joining another blog tour company for this book, and I'm excited because I have a finished copy, plus an actual handwritten letter from the author, which I thought was super sweet. Um, so now I have a finished copy and an art copy, but it's called The Brave Art of Motherhood by Rachel Marie Martin. This is uh, obviously a nonfiction about being a mom, and I am a mom. My son is five years old, and I just thought this was really great. So I'm excited to reread it and see what they changed up, what they kept from the arc, and just revisit this book in general. The next four books, yes, the next four books I got from Shadow Mountains. Now, I've been working with this publishing company for a while. I don't even remember how I got in contact with them. I probably read one of their books on NetGalley, and then one of the publicists contacted me. So, like, we do monthly correspondence all the time where she'll send me, like, a list of books that I might be interested in. I request them, and she'll send them to me. So, this first, the first two books are actually a part of the same series. So, I have the first book in the series, and it's called Wizard for Hire. This is by Obert. Obert Scott. Yes, this is middle grade fantasy. It's about wizards, obviously. Um, it sounds really good. I am not a huge fan of Harry Potter. I have not read any of the Harry Potter books, but I've read, um, I've seen all of the movies. I know. Kill me now. But, um, it sounds really good. I have read another middle grade series from them before and loved it, so I'm excited to dive into this. This one, I was so excited about because it came with a cute little bookmark as well. So, I can't wait to dive into this book and the reason why I got the first book is because the sequel is coming out um and I got the arc of it and it's called was it for hire apprentice needed so this is a sequel to that and I can't read the sequel without reading the first book so they sent me the first book have the sequel to read I'm gonna be reading this soon and I'm excited to dive into this so again this is middle grade fantasy that deals with wizards and magic the next book I have from them is more of an historical romance set in Hawaii um and I think it's gonna be interesting to read about like the culture of Hawaii it's called a song for stars it's a proper romance, so it's definitely clean, and um, it is by Ilma, Ilma Todd, I think that's how you say it. I'm probably butchering it. That's the lady's name there. Um, this book does come out April 2019, so I obviously need to read this, like, this month. But, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be really, really good. The last book I got from Shadow Mountain is going to be Daisies and Devotion by Josie S. Kilpack. This book comes out May 2019. This is, again, a Regency romance that they categorize into the proper romance. So it's a clean romance, and it sounds really interesting. I can't wait to dive into this and see how I feel about it. I'm not a big fan of historical romances or historical fiction in general, but every now and then I find a few that I do enjoy. So we'll see. The last historical fiction that I read from them was Western, and I actually did enjoy it a lot more than I thought. So hopefully with these two, I will enjoy them. The last three books are books that I got for block tours, um, and this first one I actually recently received. It's called We Were Beautiful. It says she can't remember, she can't forget, 
Um, the doctors tell her she was lucky to survive. Her therapist says it will take her time to heal. Her mind wonders if she has something to hide. So this is why a contemporary. It sounds like it's going to be a very sad read. It's by Heather Helper Hepler. Heather Hepler. Um, it sounds like it's going to be a really sad read. I'm excited to get into this and see what I think. I want to read more contemporaries that don't have a lot of romance to it. Uh, this has a little bit of romance, but um, nothing too crazy. It has to do with the car accident and a sister, and yeah, that's all I know. Okay, these last two books are from Tortine, and I am working with two separate blogging companies for these. So, like, when I say blogging companies, I mean, like, blog tour companies. Um... I did the e-arc for this specific book I'm getting ready to show you guys, loved it, and then the person that hosted the blog tour contacted us and told us that she was sending us physical, like, hardcover copies of it as a thank you. So I received mine, and I can't wait because I actually enjoyed this. It's called The Deceivers by Kristen Simmons. I love this. This is YA. I don't, I don't even know what you would consider this, honestly. I don't, I don't know, but it's about a school of con artists. That's what I'm going to say, and there's a romance, and the romance is, like, super cute. I, I love it. Um, I can't wait to reread it and dive back into this world and annotate it because it was really, really good. There were some really cute quotes that I really wanted to mark up and I'm um, cute things. So I can't wait to dive back into this world, reread it and annotate this book. The last book also from Tortine I got also for a blog store with a different company and this is actually a book I need to hurry up and read today so that I can have my review done before the two days are up. But yes, this is the book that I'm currently reading and it's called Spectacle by Jody Lynn Zodrick. Zedrick? I think it's Zodrick though. But um, this is a YA historical murder mystery with paranormal aspects. That's all that I can say, like how I can like sum it all up. Um, basically, it's set in Paris, 1887. And there is a 16-year-old named Natalia Buden, Buden, I think, and she works, um, for, she writes for the Daily Morgue column, but she has this power where she can touch the dead and find out how they died. But recently, there's been a string of murders of, like, women, and she's been touching these women, and when she touches the woman, she's looking at the murder through the eyes of the murderer, so she has to figure out who the murderer is before she's one of the victims. It sounds freaking amazing. Um... This kind of sort of gave me the like the diviners kind of vibe, kind of sort of just without the like horror aspects to it. Um, so I'm excited. It says she sees the truth, but the killer terrorizing Paris sees her. So it's kind of interesting that they're seeing each other through each other's eyes. Um, and she has to figure out who he is before he gets to her. So interesting. Can't wait to dive into this. I'm already prepared to dive into this. So I'm going to be reading this, hopefully, binge reading it tonight and um, finishing it up. But yeah, so that is it for my book haul. Lots of books. I love reading. It's okay. Um, but if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can leave them down below in the description. If I have any reviews, you can check the links down below to my blog for those reviews. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.